The signature every century has been its skyline. The very ancient, the old, the medieval, the modern. The dream of television had persisted for centuries. As far back as the 1920s, two men took up this challenge. They shared the irresistible dream of television. David Sarnoff, chairman of the board of RCA. Dr. Vladimir Zwarikin, honorary vice president and technical consultant of RCA. The turning point came in 1923, when Dr. Zwarikin invented the iconoscope. This tube, after years of further development, became the image orthicon, the electronic eye of the modern television camera. In 1929, Dr. Zwarikin and his associates announced the first successful electronic kinescope, forerunner of today's television picture tube. Nineteen thirty-one, atop the Empire State Building, the National Broadcasting Company, a service of RCA, erected the transmitting antenna for experimental television station W2XBS. Now television was really on its way. In 1937, television strode out of the studio with mobile vans developed by RCA and NBC. 1939, television is ready to make its official public debut. The setting could hardly be more perfect. The New York World's Fair. Its theme, the world of tomorrow. And the world of tomorrow became the world of today. The RCA Exhibit Building, where on April 29th, 1939, David Sarnoff stated, we have added radio sight to sound. NBC cameras probed, explored, scrutinized. Viewers watching the 3,000 television sets then in New York saw the first president ever televised, Franklin D. Roosevelt, officially opening the world of tomorrow. NBC presented the first baseball game ever televised, August 1939. 1940, the nerve-tingling drama of a national political convention, the first ever televised. Philadelphia and New York were knit together by the electronic miracle of television. Radio relays, pioneered by RCA, and the telephone company coaxial cables wiped out the horizon as the far limit of telecasting. 1941, a fateful year, war and the beginning of a four-year blackout for commercial TV. RCA electronic scientists and engineers made important contributions to the development of radar, sonar for submarine detection, the sniper scope that made it possible to see a target in darkness. Thus, the progress of perhaps a peacetime decade was compressed into four short years. 1945, the war over. After four years of unparalleled war effort, denial, sacrifice, the American public hungry for the rewards of peace. And television, with its promise of endless hours of enjoyment, entertainment, was part of the peacetime dream. 1949, an historic television first, a presidential inauguration. As Harry Truman took the oath, the event was carried over the 16-city NBC television network, extending from Washington north to Boston and west to St. Louis. Television was moving with giant strides. And in less than half a dozen years, a flip of a switch in master control could send the television image coast to coast. A dynamic industry employing more than a million. Television, an unparalleled blending of science and art, invention and engineering, private incentive and public service. By television, American business has found a most effective advertising medium. And in turn, advertising has provided the resources that sustain the standards of programming and permit the never-ending research that is the heart of the television industry. Yes, in little more than a wink of time, television has entered our homes, our lives, 
imprinted new silhouettes on our skyline. And all this has been just the beginning. There was still another dream to be realized, still another dimension to be added. Black and white television had been the herald. It put millions of TV sets into our homes, built hundreds of TV stations, created an industry, an art, a public service, an exhilarating component of our American way of life. It provided the foundation for the next giant step forward. Color. This is a world of color, and the men of television long dreamed of capturing the full paint pot of nature and brushing it on the screen. How could it be done? It was not an easy triumph, as General Sarnoff recalls. When we first began to think of television in the early 20s, we would have been content if only the rose could have been televised in black and white. That miracle had no sooner been achieved when the eye, sensitive to color, observed that the rose in monochrome lacked its true beauty and the cry went up for color. A world of color. Color captivates attention and brings the beauty of creation close to home. Color transforms the commonplace into the beautiful. It makes the humdrum memorable, gives new power to advertising and merchandising. Color, the fabric of the rainbow riding piggyback on an invisible stream of electrons. The Tournament of Roses in Pasadena, California. Telecast in color by 21 stations of the NBC network in the first west to east transmission in color on New Year's Day, 1954. motion, color, vibrancy, people. In the twinkling of an eye, it is caught by the lens of the color television camera, transmitted by invisible waves to all points of the compass. Atop a million homes, antennas pluck the pictures from the sky, and a flick of a switch or the turn of a dial, the scene reappears on the television screen. To perform this split-second magic with true fidelity of color, of sound, of reality, this is the wonder of color television. Compatible color television, an historic example of RCA's continuing efforts to open new horizons of electronics for living. Electronic, easier and safer. <laughs>